Do you think you have what it takes to live on Mars? Well, it just so happens that NASA is looking for participants for its next Mars simulation. The deadline for the second Crew Health and Performance Exploration Analog Mission, also called TAPIA, is April 2nd. Participants will spend one year inside the Mars Dune Alpha Simulator at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Texas, experiencing typical environmental stressors and uh, the limited resources of the Red Planet. So for more on this, we want to bring in uh, Christiane Hineke. She is a researcher at the Center of Applied Space Technology and Microgravity at the University of Bremen and the scientific coordinator of the initiative Human on Mars, and she participated in a similar test a few years ago. So I don't want us to run out of time, so I'm going to quickly just say your test was something very similar. It was in Hawaii in sort of like a volcanic landscape, so it kind of looked like what we think Mars looks like, right? And you were in kind of, but you had to pretend like it was Mars. So you would go out every so often, but you had to wear a spacesuit. 50 pounds, really heavy. And the focus of these sort of studies is to look at the emotional, psychological, mental impact of being in a space like this. I thought it was fascinating. Can you talk to me about some of the things that, you know, that organizers consider when choosing the personalities that participate in these sort of uh, experiments? Yes, of course. Of course, I'll be happy to. So one of the most important things really is that you as a person, I mean, you need to bring some technical qualifications because, you know, someone needs to repair the habitat, someone needs to be able to fly, um, you know, the, the, the lander. Um, but more importantly, actually, you have to be a team player. You have mm -hmm. to work together with the other people. Uh, you have to put the team priorities higher than your own priorities. So that's the, the most important thing. And the other thing is, I mean, sometimes things don't go as smoothly as you would like them to, to go. So you need to be adaptable. You need to be tolerant. You need to be able to really, when there's a conflict coming up, you need to, you know, actively look for solutions in a, in a very factual manner. So right. no, not too emotional, um, but really look actively for solutions, for compromises together. So how long were you in this uh, simulation? So our simulation lasted exactly 366 days. It was a leap year. So a year, basically. Okay. So I'm curious about, so everyone is, you know, an expert in their field, and I'm sure they've been tested in terms of their personality so that, uh, you know, to ensure that ev everyone works well together. But that's the way you feel on day one. When you're on day 300, what were some of the things that came up that surprised you? Well, after some time, you know, you, you already, you know your crew members, your crewmates very, very well. So after a while, uh, when you have an argument or a discussion, you already know the arguments that the others will bring during that discussion. Um, and so one of the recurring themes that we had in, in our discussions were about safety. And this is something I did not really expect. Um, so we were discussing this and we found compromises, but then the next time we had, again, we had some some discussions, um, again, about safety, but different aspects. And so this was something I did not really anticipate and in, in that, uh, you know, I always thought, you know, we can find solutions for everything, but then some some things just cannot be dissolved. So right. the, the challenge really is to still keep working together as a team and to really help each other um, and to make the mission work. And that's really the most important priority to, yeah. to get the mission to work. I thought it was really interesting that you said that some of the things that you missed were the feeling of wind on your skin and the feeling of warmth, the warmth of the sun, because this is all stuff that you weren't able to feel. Obviously, it took 20 minutes to get a message from Earth, so you couldn't really maintain the contacts that you expected you might be able to with family members. And the other thing that I thought was really interesting is you identified a real a key difference in motivation, that people who were motivated by a personal challenge were more likely to compromise when problems came up versus people who were motivated by a desire to become an astronaut maybe in the future. Um, oh God, there's so many more things. Okay, one last question. Would you do it again? Oh, yes, I would. <laughs> the, the, the experience is really one of a kind, and also the landscape is really unique. And uh, I mean, I love rocks, so that, I guess, helps uh, being interested in Mars. And also, yeah. if I got the chance to go to Mars, I would go. All right, Christiane, thank you so much. Thank you.